Hi and welcome to another one of our boat how to ask the expert videos about boat electrics. I'm Jan Attenstedt and I'm uh, Nigel Calder and uh, today we will talk about fuses for starter motors. Now there is some debate about whether or not you should place a fuse or circuit breaker in your cranking cable. So what do the ABYC and ISO standards say about this and what's your personal opinion about that Nigel? Well uh, that's actually the only circuit on a boat that's not required to have a fuse um, and there's a reason for that it's come out of the automotive industry typically the batteries here the starter motors here the cable runs about this long uh, there's very little likelihood of a short circuit developing and on top of that because the cable runs are very short uh, voltage drop isn't a major issue and we typically undersize the conductors and if you were to put a fuse on there based on the ampacity of the conductor every time you crank the engine you'd blow the fuse mm -hmm. So it's not practical to put a fuse in there. However, uh, we do have a significant number of fires on boats over the years from shorted starter motors. And also on boats, we frequently have our batteries quite a long way away from the engine. Mm -hmm. So then we got longer conductor runs. And then you might have the negative and positive strapped together with no overcurrent protection. And if you get a short circuit, you're going to start a fire on the boat. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've always advocated putting a fuse in that circuit but since we're not required to have one, we don't have to comply with the ampacity requirements mm -hmm. on the fuse. So we can grossly oversize the fuse mm -hmm. to make sure it doesn't nuisance blow. And, but in the event that we get like a shorter starter motor, it's still going to blow. Mm -hmm. So typically for a small engine, you know, below 100 horsepower, what's that, about 80 kilowatts? Probably something, something like that. that. Um, I'll put in a 300 amp slow blow fuse. And uh, in 20, 30 years, probably more of doing this, I've never had one of those blow. On a bigger boat, you might want to put in a 500 amp, mm -hmm. you know, bigger engine, yes. 500 amp slow blow fuse. So something like an A&L fuse, for example? Yeah, I use A&L fuses because mm -hmm. um, they're relatively cheap. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that way uh, you've got ultimate short circuit protection uh, and you won't have a nuisance blow. Mm -hmm. yeah. What would you do in case it blows? I mean, then you can't crank the engine. You can't crank the engine, but... So, but would it make sense, for example, to add something like a, um, like some bypass if you need to have a, have a switch bypassing the fuse, or would no, you not recommend uh, that? You just put in a big mm. enough fuse to make sure it doesn't right. blow. <laughs> um, as I say, I've never had one blow. Mm -hmm. I know um, uh, people have had them blow, but mm -hmm. that's largely because they, they've tried to size the fuse mm -hmm. closer to the ampacity of the, yeah. of the uh, mm -hmm. positive conductor to the starter motor. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's no reason to do that because we don't have to have the fuse in the first mm -hmm. place. Yeah. So it would probably only blow if the engine would be like seized or blocked. Well, anyway, yeah, but if you like fill the engine with salt water, for example, mm -hmm. and then you try to crank, uh, and you try to crank for, for seconds, because uh, these slow blow fuses, you know, they're, the point at which a fuse blows is typically 130% of mm -hmm. its rated current, and it's got to be at that for several minutes mm -hmm. before it blows. So you've actually got to be way over the top yeah. for, for a while before they'll blow. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you first crank, you probably get, let's say we put a 300 amp fuse in there. When we first crank, we might get a inrush current of seven, 800 amps. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the fuse isn't going to blow mm -hmm. because of the time delay characteristics. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then that current's immediately going to fall back once the starter motor starts to spin. And, and mm -hmm. so the fuse will be fine. Yeah. So it is a good idea to add a fuse even though it's oversized and there's another requirement for these cables anyway that they need to be specifically protected or shielded right well the... that's also interesting because mm -hmm. on the house batteries uh, they if you you're supposed to have additional sheathing on mm -hmm. the positive conductor until you get to the first overcurrent mm -hmm. device which is the fuse uh, which incidentally uh, i almost never see on boats and boat builders typically don't put it in there uh, but again, because there's no overcurrent protection requirement on the cranking battery, I don't believe, and, I, and I'm here, I'm kind of talking off the top of my head, but I don't believe we've got in the standard any requirement for, mm -hmm. for that extra sheathing mm -hmm. on the cranking circuit. Okay. Well, I mean, at least in my boat, I run the cable. It's not fused, but I run the cable in a special, uh, yeah, special tube so that it's uh, very unlikely to get a short somewhere. Yeah. Um, I think the bigger issue with the, with the cranking mm. circuits is, uh, is problems with the mm -hmm. starting motor. Yeah. Yeah. So I might look into that in my own boat <laughs> a little right. more. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I know of several mm -hmm. boats that are burned up from shorted mm -hmm. starter motors. Yeah. Well, 
Thanks for the advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thanks a lot, Nigel. And um, if you want to learn more about electrical installations on boats and how to do the things right, check out our courses on boat electrics at boathowto.com. <laughs> See you soon.